The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I am Father Albert, your new pastor here at St. Mary Magdalene, and I look forward to what the Lord has in store for us. They took offense at him. He was amazed at their lack of faith. As your new pastor, I pray that those words do not often describe us or that if they do, they do not come to the same conclusion. There aren't exactly any hills for you to throw me off of, like the Nazareans tried with Jesus, but I still would rather not end up tossed into the bayou because of something I said. Now, I'm not Jesus, so I'm not perfect. And it's possible, perhaps even likely, that any conflict you and I may have will be at least partly my fault. Still, as we set out on our time together, let's try to hold to a simple agreement. I shall strive to offer you the love and truth of Jesus Christ in and through his church, and you shall strive not to lose faith, take offense, or toss me to the bayou. Sound fair? Indeed, I sense that I shall also receive Christ from you by your witness to the gospel. Not that any of us should expect this to go perfectly. It is precisely the idea of expectations that we need to pay attention to today. Why do the Nazareans reject Jesus Christ? Because he did not meet their expectations. That's natural. It's normal to react negatively when our expectations go unmet because this creates pain and disappointment and annoyance and a whole host of negative experiences. And even worse, unmet expectations when not properly addressed, these emotions and feelings metastasize into resentment. And resentment, it poisons everything. Marriages, friendships, businesses, governments, the social order, and even churches are often hurt and even destroyed by resentment. And it is this resentment, this rapidly putrefying anger at Jesus not being what they expected, that leads the Nazareans, the people who grew up with him, to trying to kill him. Can you imagine that? That would be like you trying to drown Father Louis in the bayou just because the kid you knew wound up becoming your pastor. You, instead, received him with great love and docility, thanks be to God. And I am immensely grateful to the good that Father Louis has done in and through you, and for your willingness to receive him and his many gifts. And we pray that we can carry that forward. Still, we do have to watch out for resentment. To prevent resentment, 
it's key to have the right expectations. The Nazareans very incorrectly expected the Messiah to be so completely other that Jesus' humanity was deeply offensive to them. Jesus did nothing wrong to cause that resentment. Their false expectations did. Jesus, despite literally being God, could not fix that. Jesus' perfect humanity offended people. The imperfect humanity of priests often offends people too. So you and I have to talk about expectations to avoid this problem in the first place. What do you expect of me? And what do I expect of you? We've already agreed to try not to end up like the Nazareans, tossing Jesus off a hill. But let's be specific. First, you have every right to expect me to offer you the sacraments. Masses, confessions, anointings, baptisms, weddings, funerals. I exist to bring you Jesus Christ through the sacraments, and I will strive to do so. Yet you and I both can only expect the sacraments as they are, not as we wish them to be. I think you know that the church is not Burger King. They can't have it your way. We do not get to decide what the sacraments are or how they work. I cannot go to another priest for confession and expect him to change the rules for that sacrament, just as you cannot expect that from me. Chances are I will have to tell some of you no, at least some of the time. I promise to do my best to do so only when it's actually called for to avoid personal bias and arbitrary opinions, to stick to the truth of what the sacraments are according to what Christ has given us in the church. For my part, I expect you all to try to understand when that happens. Secondly, you have every right to expect from me the teaching of the church. The truth not ideologies, not personal opinions, not the latest fad or the popular political opinion. The eternal truth as given us in and through the church. I will strive to teach scripture and tradition to faithfully follow the magisterium of the church and to seek practical and creative ways to apply the eternal truth to our own circumstances. Some of those truths are hard to hear. Believe me, they are often quite hard to say, especially to someone close to you. But you and I must both remember that it's not about us. The truth is for us, but it's not about us. So let's strive to love and follow the truth, to help each other bear with it, whenever it becomes difficult or painful to do so. Third, things are going to change. That's inevitable. Despite the fact that our church is rooted in the eternal, unchanging truth of Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, we are living, breathing human beings who exist in time. Therefore, we will change. And change in itself is not bad. The same eternal truth takes on different appearances over the course of time and in different circumstances. We've always had the same seven sacraments, but the timing and language and format of those sacraments have shifted quite a bit throughout history and in different cultures, despite being the same sacraments. I am not Father Louis, and you are not St. John the Evangelist Parish, so you and I both will face changes in how we experience the church, despite the fact that we are still members of the one church, brothers and sisters of the one priest, Jesus Christ. I just ask this, that when I change something, try to see it in the best possible light. To start by accepting it and looking for the reason, rather than by defensively demanding proof before accepting. Now, change doesn't always mean that what was done before was bad. Quite often, 
a good thing needs to change to become a different good thing because of circumstances. And for my part, I will strive to explain why whenever possible. To show that what I am trying to do is not about mere preference or comfort, but is rooted in some higher principle and or principle or pastoral need. Finally, resentment will still happen, even when our expectations are reasonable. If the poison of resentment can not always be avoided, is there an antidote that we can use when it shows up? Yes, it's called forgiveness. Perhaps you're excited about having me as your pastor right now, or perhaps not. And there will be times when at least some of you will be at least a little unhappy with me. I will make mistakes, and so will you. And even when there aren't mistakes, it might still hurt or be difficult. So you and I will need to forgive each other our mistakes, or at the very least, to forgive each other the pain, even when no mistakes were made. Saints throughout history have often hurt one another. The key is that they loved and forgave each other even then. Truly, it is a joy to begin my time as your pastor, and I look forward to what the Lord has in store for us. I don't exactly have a master plan, but the Lord does. And while you and I may not always know what to expect from each other, we know what we can expect from the Lord, his loving mercy. So as we begin our time together, let us keep our eyes fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. The Lord knows we're definitely going to need it.